Hi there, and welcome to Hyundai Power Products. My name is Adrian, and today we're going to look at this HYC 40LI battery-powered chainsaw from Hyundai. So in this video, I'm going to open the box and lay the contents out on the bench so you can see exactly what you get. And alongside this, I'm going to show you how to assemble it correctly, and then again, some good health and safety tips along the way. Can I start this video on an important note and say that chainsaws should only be operated by trained personnel? If you haven't had any previous experience, then I certainly recommend you get appropriate training before use. And at the same time, it's imperative with a chainsaw that you wear the correct, appropriate PPE at all times when using a chainsaw. So I've laid everything out on the table here for you to see. So first of all, we have your lithium ion battery unit. Then of course, we have the battery charger with its power lead. We have the chainsaw head unit itself. We have the chain. We're going to be wearing gloves when we fit this a little later. We have the chain bar. We have the plastic cover that goes over the chain when it's fitted. And finally, we have your user manual. Now, I do recommend that you read the user manual thoroughly before use. And the first thing we need to do is ensure that our battery is fully charged. Now, typically, they will arrive to you with some charge. As you can see, this one has three out of four bars. So I'm going to put the battery on charge first so we've got the longest life in our battery when we begin using the machine. So our battery charger has a separate power lead, simply plugs in the back of the charger, and then we can plug it into a 13 amp outlet. Now, if you look at the battery, you'll see that one end has four elongated slots. Elongated slots pointing downwards. The battery slides into the battery charger and clicks home. So with the battery charger plugged in, the battery in place, we can see the green light is flashing. Okay, so a flashing green light, there's some symbols on the side, but a flashing green light means that it's partially charged, but it is charging. A continuous green light would be the state it would be in when it's fully charged. So there are two other symbols. One is a continuous red light, and one is a flashing red light. So if I pull the battery out, We've got the continuous red light. That means that the power is on, but there's no battery in it. If we put a battery in, having just discharged it, and we have a flashing red light, that pretty much means that it, normally that the battery is still too hot. So it needs to cool down before it will allow a charge. So it's an overheat warning. But typically you can leave it in there. It'll stop charging. It'll wait for the battery to cool down. And then once it's cool enough, you'll see the green light start flashing. So I've got the chainsaw unit itself, and one of the tasks we're going to do is to fit the chain bar and chain. So the first thing I need to do is to remove this cover here. So I'll unscrew anti-clockwise here. Just keep turning. There we are, and that cover will come away. So that reveals the point at which the chain fits. So I've got the chain bar here laid on the table and the chain. Now, I'm wearing gloves while handling the chain, as you can see. So the chain has one direction it can go onto this chain bar and one direction only, or certainly onto the chainsaw. The chain bar can go either way, but typically I would fit it with the Hyundai logo the right way up on the chain. So when we fit the chain bar, it's going to go in that orientation. Okay. So that said, the chain is going to fit around the outside of the chain bar in the groove and in the groove the whole way along so i'll just get it started in the groove and i've actually fitted this the correct way okay so let me point out the chain rotates in this direction across the top around the corner and back towards the saw if you see this tooth here this sharp tooth the one that's on this face of the chain it's got a long slope here with the hook and then just a 45 degree angle piece with a slight curve on this side. That would be the correct way around. So it will be cutting in this direction. Now you'll see on the back of the chain is an identical link to this, the other hand, and it's on the back side of the chain. So it's the one on the front side of the chain we're looking at, this link here, or it could be any one of them on this side with the, with the teeth on, but that is the shape with a slope there 
and the smaller tooth there. So the long tooth towards the chainsaw and the short tooth towards the end of the bar. This thread is going to come through the slot as well as this little stud. And this pin here, the chain adjustment pin, needs to fit through the hole in the bar. Okay, so with that in mind, we're going to fit the chain, and as you can see, these little segments fit into the grooves in the end, and then that would fit down on. But as you can see in this instance, the locator for the chain tensioner is not fitting in the hole at this point. So let me just see if I can pull it a little bit. No, it's not going to fit. So we need to adjust that pin. And as I can see from this, the distance is about eight millimeters back from that stud. So I'll just remove that again. And as I'm looking at it now, it's actually in line with that stud. So I'm going to need to adjust it slightly backwards. So to move this pin, we have the adjustment knob here. Anti-clockwise is to slacken the chain, clockwise to tighten. So if I turn this anti-clockwise, as you can see, the pin is moving back. I'm going to say that's roughly the position, maybe a little bit more where I wanted it. Again, exactly the same procedure. Get the chain looped into the, into the gear. Okay. Ah, there we are. This time we have success. And you can see the pin is now coming through the hole. So we've got it in the ballpark of where we need to be. I'm just going to adjust it up maybe just a little bit tighter. And then the chain and bar will sit there loosely, not clamped, ready for clamping up. So at this point now, we can refit the cover. So inside here is the thread, which threads onto this stud. We locate it here, as you can see the cutout bits around there. And we'll just start to do it clockwise, this clamp. Okay, I'm just gonna back it off so that it's still loose. That's my starting point for chain adjustment. So, as you can see, there is movement or slight movement up and down in this bar. When we tighten it all and set it, we want it in the up position. Simplest way, as you can see, I've got a piece of wood here on the bench. If I put it down on there, it pushes it up to its extremity in the up position, and that's the point at which we would adjust it. So we need to adjust the chain now. I can pull that chain right out of the groove. It doesn't particularly snap back. If I turn the adjuster clockwise, let's just go half a turn. Now that snaps nicely back into the groove. Maybe a little bit tighter, it's coming right out of the groove. Quarter turn. That's about the perfect tension. So now that we're here, still resting on the wood, I'm going to tighten up on the outside nice and tight, and lock the bar, chain, and adjuster all in position. So that's it, that's the tension set. So just to reiterate, I should be able to pull that chain out of the groove so I can just see the underside of those teeth, and it should snap back into position. We shouldn't see it sagging on the underside out of the groove, like this, for instance, when it's sat at idle. It should snap back just into the groove. So now that we've fitted and tensioned the chain initially, I'm just going to put the plastic cover on to keep myself safe and to save damaging the blade while I'm going through the rest of the procedure. So the next part of the procedure would be to put oil in the chain oil tank. So there's a little reservoir on the machine. Fill a cap here, undo it anti-clockwise, and we can top this up with chain oil. Now, there is a little adjuster here. Obviously, you don't want to fill it so far as it comes pouring back out on you. But when you come to somewhere near level, you'll see when it's full up to the top of this sight glass. Now, it is important that you use proper chain lubricating oil, not any engine oil or anything like that. Chain lubricating oil is a lot thicker and has the right viscosity and won't make a mess everywhere. If you put normal sort of engine oil or something like that in it, it will flow out far too quickly and be very messy indeed. So now that we've done pretty much all of the assembly, short of fitting the battery, I'm going to show you some of the controls and safety features. Most importantly, we have this lever here. When you're operating the chainsaw, should you have a kickback at all, the tendency is for the saw to kick up in this orientation. And what would happen is your arm would bang on this lever here, which will cut the power to the saw. 
on a petrol chainsaw it would be called a chain brake. It would have a mechanical brake attached to it as well. But this is an electrical interlock. So when that's pushed forward, no power will go to the chain and it will stop. When it's pushed back or pulled back, it's in the armed position. And this would be the point where if I pull this trigger and the battery was in and it was switched on, that the chain would start to rotate. So important factor safety wise, if you're ever moving around transporting the saw or not actually using it, always leave the brake or the lever here in the forward position so that if you inadvertently pull the trigger, that chain is not gonna start unexpectedly. So that's the great safety feature, but I would recommend always to push that forward. So moving on, button here, interlock for this. So you can't pull the trigger unless you pull that button. If I pull the trigger now, if I had a battery in, of course, and that lever's forward, nothing would happen. I would have to pull that lever back, push there, and pull the trigger. Okay, so that's the two ways to start. And again, third point is there's an on-off button on the top here. Obviously, when you're not using the saw, switch it off, put the brake on, and it's completely safe. Okay, so we're gonna fit the battery in now. Um, the side that has the Hyundai sticker on it goes towards the rear of the saw. And again, the end with the four slots goes in first. So it simply drops in the slot, okay? With it dropped in there, a little push, and you'll see it's now latched in. So that's the battery in place, ready to go. To remove the battery for charging, push that little lever, battery pops up, ready to go for charging again. So drop it back in, give it a push. That's it, it's in place, ready to use. So next step to this, I'm not actually going to start it at the moment, the on off switch. Okay, so beep, 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 green light means it's ready to go. So if I put that brake on, I get a flashing green light that tells me the brake's on. And what that will mean is if I pull the trigger, it's in a safe state. If I turn this off now and pull the trigger, the saw blade would run. So I'm going to remove the protective cover, make sure there's nothing in my way. Okay, so as we said, nothing happens on the trigger. If I pull that guard back and pull the trigger, the chain will run. Yeah? If I let go of the trigger, the chain will stop. Okay, so what I'm going to do is do a quick test to make sure that this interlock is working correctly. So I'm going to start it up. Bang the switch and it should stop, even though I'm still holding onto the trigger. That's operating correctly and the green light has gone to flash. So that's a quick safety check to make sure that the safety features are operating before we commence work. So I should be able to, doesn't work, pull it back, yes. And when I push that lever, it should stop, even though I'm still got hold of the trigger. Okay. I'm happy that that chain is operating correctly. The chainsaw and the safety features are operating correctly. I'm just going to switch it off now by pushing and holding the button till the flashing light stops. No lights at all, leave it in the safe position. So with a brand new chain and bar, during its first minutes and hours of use, this chain will perform an initial stretch. So it, it does stretch initially, as it were. So when it's new, it will have a certain amount of stretch in it. Once this initial stretch is gone, there'll be no further need for adjustment on a regular basis. Just keep an eye on it. But what you will find is that first 10 minutes, 15 minutes of use, that that chain will become slack. So if that chain becomes slack, we saw what we did earlier. So I'll get my piece of wood. I'll tell you what I'll do is make it slack. I'm going to loosen that. Just... Loosen the tensioner off and a little bit slacker than that. Okay, so as you can see, that chain's not snapping back. That will be, let's say it was the stretch position that it's become after a short period of use. So again, pop the end on a piece of wood. I've loosened this off just a small amount. It's loose. Um, as you can see, I was able to move the bar. So I'll tension the chain back up by turning this Clockwise, that's back to the right tension. Tighten up the cover, we're ready to go again. Keep a close eye on it, it will stretch initially, 
you may have to do this two or three times during the first sort of 15 minutes, hour of work, depending on how hard you're working it. But it's important to make sure that that chain isn't too slack or it could jump out of the groove. Well, here we are. That's the HYC 40LI chainsaw. Well, I do hope you found it useful, as I said. And if you want any more information on this or any of our other products, visit www.hyundaipowerproducts.co.uk. I've been Adrian, and thank you for watching.